Chapter 1 Minus Zero The events take place in Chun Nan High School for Girls. This school is very famous. She is famous not only for her good education, but also for her excellent students. Ordinary people, boys, consider this place a paradise on earth. Last year, the school suddenly changed its main rule and began to recruit boys. But the students were not satisfied with this development, and they began to get rid of the guys in all possible ways. Since then, the school has become a paradise for girls and a hell for boys. However, ironically, another poor guy was transferred to this school. What is waiting for him? Hell or Heaven? Chapter 1 Minus 1 Events take place in the city of Chun Nan. The guy runs headlong. Two guys are running after him. One of them is called Hong Kai Yang. He asks his partner where the thief has gone. The other guy replies that the thief turned into an alley, so he suggests waiting for the others. His name is Feng Kin, and he is the main character. Hong Kai waves it off, saying that the two of them can handle it. The hero also notices that you need to be more careful, because the thief may have a weapon. The thief stumbles into a dead end. He wants to climb over the fence, but it's too high. Feng asks the guy to return what he stole. The thief turns out to be an MO from the Forgotten Love Club. He replies that a couple of schoolboys won't be able to stop him, a member of the Forgotten Love family. The guy starts dancing, showing the real skills of an artist. He tries to intimidate his pursuers with this, but it looks too shabby to work. The latter is what the main character notices. Hunkai is the first to break down. He prescribes savory bream to an unfinished artist, after which the latter falls to the ground, and then his comrades begin to kick him. The artist begs you to stop. Ian notices that he's soiled his new clothes. The hero calms him down, saying that it can be easily washed, and they need to go further to find the others. The comrade supports Fen's words. Then the hero notices around the corner a girl with white hair and the likeness of cat ears on her head. The girl is shaking all over, but still finds the strength to go out to the guys. A representative of the fair sex refers to the main character as a brother. She immediately asks if they're done yet. The girl's name is Dai Bai. She praises the guys for being quick on the job. The guys answer with sadness that they managed to catch only one, and the second was able to escape. The hero begins to communicate with the girl. They completely forget about the existence of the third person in their conversation. Feng asks the fairer sex where the two girls have gone. Ziyu explains that she hid to see her little brother's feet with her own eyes. This sounds creepy to the guy, so he decides to change the subject, asking about where Xu and Zin has gone. Dai Bai replies that she doesn't know exactly where the man is right now, but she assumes that he's probably hitting on some girl. The hero asks her guess again, after which they both see their friend talking to some young girl with pink hair. At the same time, Xu and Zin is chatting with a beautiful girl. He reassures her, insisting that she shouldn't worry, because his people will soon return her back. The guy takes the victim's hand and gently moves closer to her, offering to go and have a drink somewhere before they get back. The girl blushes all over. This is how Xu and Zin sees the scene. The hero together with his friend see this picture. They don't like it, so Fen asks the guy what he's doing here. After receiving no response from Ziyu and Zin, they both start punishing him for being so impertinent. The guy apologizes for his outburst, begging for mercy. The girl whose bag was stolen is named Han Yu Ding. She is a student at Chun Nan High School for girls. She laughs nervously at the comical nature of the situation. The hero approaches her, handing her the stolen bag. The victim sincerely thanks the guys for helping her return the bag. She wants to invite them all to dinner. Fen just shrugs it off, saying that they didn't do anything special. He notices that it's getting late, so the girl should go home. Xu and Zin can't believe what he's hearing. He does not want to just let the victim go, because he sees this as an ideal opportunity to meet a beautiful, slender and rich girl. His eyes literally burn with desire, but the three of them don't share his enthusiasm. Dai Bai's eyes suddenly light up. She claims to have written a short story about little brother Feng's feet. She invites the guys to listen, but they don't want to do it at all. Hung Kai also recalls that he also participated in this. The girl begins her performance, and the trinity begins to pray for the end of it. One of them asks to kill him, another prays for an end, and the third claims that he can't take it anymore. My friends understand that it's time to get out of here. The first one escapes Xu and he's in. He explains his actions by saying that he forgot to turn off the iron, so he needs to hurry because the whole hut may burn down. Hung Kai runs off in the opposite direction, saying that he remembered an important thing. His girlfriend is cheating on him right now. The hero is also going to run, but the aura of the girl makes him stop in mid-sentence. When Dai Bai turns around and sees her little brother, she literally melts with happiness. She throws herself at him with a hug, declaring that only he can appreciate her talent. The guy knows he's in serious trouble. Fen tries to gently get rid of the annoying girl, finding a good reason, but someone starts calling him sharply. He is very happy about it inside. The hero picks up the phone and starts a conversation with his mother. The guy gets straight to the point, determined to find out what happened. 
The voice on the phone announces that they are in trouble, so Feng Kingyu needs to hurry home. Young Dai Bai's eyes are filled with tears from all this. The hero hangs up the phone, then tells the girl that he needs to go home. She grabs him by the elbow, begging him to stay. The guy once again repeats that he needs to run, and then breaks out of the grip of the fair sex, going home. On the way, he says goodbye to her, and Dai Bai declares that he is a real fool. There are only four people in the hero's family. Mom, Dad, him and his little sister. They are not particularly rich and especially not famous, but they have a quiet and happy life. Feng Kin jumps over a small fence, already approaching his house. The guy puts the key in the lock and turns it, opening the door. He enters the room, announcing to all his relatives that he has returned. His parents are sitting on the couch in the living room, waiting for him. From their faces, it becomes clear that something out of the ordinary has clearly happened, so the hero immediately tries to clarify the situation by asking a question about the state of affairs. The father puts his hand on his son's shoulder, asking for forgiveness. He announces that even though he has just turned 18, now he will have to take care of his mother and sister. These words unsettle the hero. He's trying to figure out what it all means. Fen's eyes fill with tears. He realizes that the situation is terrible. He hugs his father, then begins to ask him not to despair. He reminds them that medicine has now made great strides, so they can cure his cancer. A man gives a savory bream to his son, sending him to the floor. A blood clot flies out of the hero's mouth. It turns out that the father is healthy as a bull. An adult looks at his child, who has recently entered adulthood. His mind is racing with thoughts of how his son could have thought he was dying. And besides, he's not stupid enough to refuse treatment. Feng Ken rises to his feet, clutching at the bruised spot. He looks at his father with distaste, asking why he hit him. The man answers the question with a question, clarifying why he decided to bury his father alive. The hero takes his hand away from the cheek where his father's hand was left. It finally dawns on him that his father isn't sick. This makes him very angry, so he wants to know what's going on. The man only insults his son, calling him a jerk. The mother intervenes in the conversation, who decides to clarify the present state of affairs. It turns out that ten years ago, the hero's father took out a loan of ten yuan and forgot to return it. Because of this, he currently owes the bank one million yuan. The woman's words simply kill the hero, who is amazed at the sum he heard. He doesn't understand why the interest rates are so high, so he asks his father where he got the loan, assuming that he got it from the bank at the bus stop. The father makes it clear that in order to pay off his debts, he decided to go to Afghanistan to buy coconuts. He knows it's a good job to make money, but it's a very dangerous job, so he asks his son to look after his mother and sister while he's away. The hero absolutely does not like this, because it is deadly dangerous, so he decides to clarify whether there is any other option to pay off his debts. A grin appears on the man's face, which does not bode well. Feng Kin has his father's hand on his shoulder. The man claims that he knew that he could rely on his son. The mother puts her hand on the guy's other shoulder, and the hero gets a bad feeling. Realizing that now it is impossible to step back, the hero decides to find out what he should do. My father immediately replies that all he needs to do is transfer to Chun Nan Senior Girls School. Feng asks where he should transfer to, and then he immediately explains how this will help his father pay off his debts. When the boy understands the meaning of his parents' words, he screams out the name of this school in horror, knowing full well that a real hell awaits him on earth. Chapter 1-2 The guy decides to clarify everything that is happening, so he clarifies how his transfer to Chun Nan will help with the payment of the debt. The mother explains that the current headmistress of the school was her classmate. According to her, if Feng Kin studied there, he would receive a very good scholarship. The father also adds that if his son agrees to the transfer, they will also accept land for free. The woman sums up, from which it becomes clear that they will not only be able to get rid of debt, but also allow land to get a good education for free. The hero's father approves of this decision. Parents start dancing with joy, because Chun Nan Senior Girls School is an elite educational institution. When the guy finishes his studies, he will become a director in some company and then find a beautiful and rich wife. Then they'll all be so happy together. The hero thinks to himself that if Lan will study in such an elite institution, then she will really be able to get a good education. He's starting to realize that this isn't such a bad idea. My father snaps his mouth shut. Tears are streaming down his cheeks, and he declares that they have no right to force their son to do such a thing. If he refuses, he will go to Afghanistan to buy coconuts. Tears also appear in the woman's eyes. After such a scene, Feng Ken still agrees to this proposal. The man rejoices at what he heard from his son, stating that he knew that he would not let him down. The hero is trying to comprehend what is happening. The father gets down to business, saying that the headmistress asked the guy to come to her tomorrow morning. The boy turns to his father in confusion, trying to figure out how she could have known he would agree. Then the father, showing a thumbs up, asks his son not to forget the suitcase in which they have already packed his things. This completely shocks the hero. 
who is clearly not ready for such a thing. Feng Kin finally realizes that he is being evicted from his home. He goes to his room for the last time, remembering that he has to go to the headmistress tomorrow morning. He notes that everything is happening too fast, which is why he does not have time to comprehend everything. In the room, he sees a blue suitcase. The hero swears a little, realizing that the parents really did not lie about this issue. He sits down in a chair, turns on the desk lamp, and then begins to remember everything he knows about Chun Nan High School for girls. Five months ago, the hero passed by this school. The weather was overcast and it was raining. The guy was walking under an umbrella so as not to get wet. He didn't bother anyone until someone hit the fence bars, startling him badly. This person turned out to be a schoolboy with pink hair who asked for help. He was unwrapped by a girl with red hair. After which, having prescribed a savory bream, she demanded to shut up. She smiled at the hero who happened to witness all this, then dragged the guy by the scruff of the neck back into the building. FJ and Kin, on the other hand, watched the scene in horror, not understanding what it was. Four months ago, the hero found a similar picture. It was evening then. The leaves had fallen over the sidewalk, and he was moving next to the same fence. This time it was the blonde who asked for help, begging to be released, because he didn't want to die. The guy was grabbed from behind by a woman's hand, and then hit the fence. The blonde only noted that the guy tried to escape after looking at their president. The hero is startled to realize that this is another poor guy. It happened again three months ago. A brown-haired boy was trying to climb over the huge gate of Chun Nan High School, shouting that he would live. A rope wrapped around his neck from behind. She took a sharp drag on her cigarette, then broke her neck. He fell to the sidewalk right in front of the hero, who did not understand what was going on there at all. It should be noted that in all three cases there are exaggerations. Feng Kin doesn't particularly like such prospects. He is saddened by the fact that he will have to spend a whole year in such a place. Then he remembers that he forgot to do something. He needed to tell Lan everything. He goes to his sister's room. He knocks several times on the door, which has a sign with her name in the form of a pink heart. My sister opens the door, asking me what my brother needs. The hero informs that they are both transferring to Chun Nan High School for girls. Lan replies that she already knows about this, because her parents told her. Lan asks the guy not to call her sister at school because she doesn't want anything to do with the killer. A member of the fair sex slams the door. The hero realizes that his sister is still mad at him, so he decides that he should leave. As Feng Kin moves away from the door, Lan opens it, watching his brother leave. Chapter 1-3 Four girls with crazy eyes stand against the red sky. One of them claims to be hungry. She's already eaten 300 guys, but she wants more. A representative of the fair sex is interested in who will be the first 300, after which she looks at the hero, specifying that he may be the one. Feng Kin opens his eyes and screams in terror. He jerks into a sitting position, trying to regain his composure. After a few moments, he realizes that it was just a dream, although the guy notes that the dream was very scary. He wipes beads of sweat from his brow, realizing that this was some kind of hell, not a dream. A parent's voice from behind the door calls the hero, reminding him that it's time for him to get ready. The guy just says that he remembers everything. After a while, the guy is already standing at the entrance to the school. He is met by security guards at the huge gate. And he is amazed at the scale of this elite educational institution. Men at the entrance wish the hero good luck, advising him to be careful. Two of them point out that Feng Kin is so young. They hope that he has lived a good life, however short. The hero is amazed at this attitude towards himself. It's like he's being escorted to the death penalty. He makes a mental note that he hasn't done anything wrong yet, so he doesn't know why they're treating him like this. Feng Kin climbs the stairs to the headmaster's office. When he reaches the door, he catches his breath, swearing at the number of floors. He notes that in the event of an earthquake, the survival rate here will be zero. He knocks on the door of the principal's office, and a few seconds later a woman's voice calls out for him to enter. The guy opens the door, immediately apologizing for bothering him. The hero examines the director's office. There's a picture of Scanzi on the wall. There's a coat rack in the corner and a closet next to it. A little further away from him is a chair. Feng Kin notices that it's cozy. At the table sits a girl in a chair, which is turned back to the guy. She claims that they haven't seen each other for a long time. The girl in the chair turned to the guy. She was dressed in formal attire, a red jacket, a red skirt, and a white blouse. The headmistress looked very young. She couldn't have been more than 30 years old. Blonde hair, honey-colored eyes, rounded features, and a slender figure. She greeted Feng Kin with a bright smile. Her name is Lai Sun, and she is the principal of Chun Nan High School for Girls. The hero blushed at the girl's words. Steam came out of his ears, and his face turned red with embarrassment. Lai Song approached the guy while he was still in his thoughts. Feng sat on the chair, not flying in the clouds until the headmistress put her hands on his shoulders. The guy tried to find out what was going on. 
The girl hugged the hero, pressing him into her boobs. This made the boy blush to the tips of his ears. After that, she pulled away, stating the guy has grown a lot. Fen's nose started to bleed from the girl's excessive attention. But he quickly recovered, trying to figure out what she was doing. The headmistress notices that the other person has probably forgotten the fact that he used to always hug her when they met. The guy recalls what just happened, asking if it's true. The blonde gives a more detailed explanation that then he said his first word, calling her mom. A light bulb lights up above Fen's head, after which he gives out that he now remembers everything, and then assures the interlocutor that this never happened. This makes Lee Sun feel embarrassed at the awkwardness of the moment. The headmistress tries to justify her behavior by saying that she noticed how much the guy was agitated, so the aunt decided to distract him. Feng notes that the word distract is not appropriate here. For him, it's more appropriate that the girl tried to seduce him. Lee Sung decides to ignore these words. She hands him the paper, telling him it's time to get down to business. She explains that she gave the guy a non-disclosure agreement. The hero repeats the name of the document in bewilderment, not understanding at all why he should sign such a thing. Chapter 1-4 Lee soon reveals that they have several school rules that need to be followed. In addition, she notes that there are things that should not go beyond the school. The hero begins to study the document, and the headmistress asks him to pay special attention to the first two rules. The first rule is that you can't use force against girls, and the second refers to relationships that cannot be started in the walls of school. The blonde asks the new student to focus their attention on the second rule. She explains that they don't recruit boys to set up a harem in the school, but, unfortunately, all the previous boys were transferred to this institution only for this. Feng understands perfectly well, but he can't accept the first rule. His pride is hurt by the fact that he will not be able to use physical force, because it is difficult to accept that you will be beaten by everyone who is not lazy. Lee soon asks the other person to calm down, saying that if you use physical force in self-defense, then this is another matter. Feng Kin quickly gets his emotions under control, realizing that no one can bully him now. He is interested in why the girls' school started recruiting boys. The reason for recruiting boys to a girls' school is very simple. It is narrated by the headmistress. Students at their school spend their days surrounded by other girls, so they are completely unable to communicate with boys. Lee Sun adds that because of this, the fair sex students at the school began to think that all guys are goats, and their inability to communicate with them only increased the effect. It was because of this that they accepted quite a few guys last year, but all of them were motivated by the desire to enter into relationships with the opposite sex. In the end, this only worsened the already deplorable situation. So this year they are going to accept a limited number of boys, but with good intentions. The headmistress clasps her hands in a pleading gesture, saying that she has high hopes for Feng Kin. Lee Sun asks her boyfriend to help her change the way her students think about boys. The blonde puts her hands on the hero's shoulders. The latter is in complete shock from what is happening. The girl declares that the fate of the school is in his hands, so he must promise that he will try. Feng says he'll do his best. After hearing what she wanted, Lee Sun claims that she knew that she could rely on a guy. She asks him to take his things to the dorm, making a reservation that it is not far from the school. When the hero wants to leave the headmistress's office, the blonde decides to tell him something else important. She asks him not to approach the old abandoned building because it is a restricted area. The girl wants the guy better, so he should not look for adventures on the fifth point. Walking around the school grounds, Feng Kin realizes that it is very huge. After a while, he gets to a huge building that is a men's dormitory. At the moment, there are zero students there. The hero moves into the dorm. He gets room number 201. He goes up to the second floor and opens the door to room 201. He is amazed at what he sees. Before his eyes is a huge room with several paintings, two armchairs, a pair of windows, one small table for drinking tea and one kitchen table with a white vase of flowers on it. After a while, the guy finishes unpacking his things. He wipes the sweat from his face and exhales, noting that it was very tiring. Feng Kin looks out the window and sees that the weather outside is bright and sunny. He feels like taking a walk. After leaving the territory of the men's hostel, the hero goes for a walk. He admires the sights that appear before his eyes. He notes that everything in this school is very beautiful. He doesn't even want to think about how much it all cost. After a while, Feng Kin walks out to the water's edge. He is amazed that they even made an artificial lake. Then his eyes fall on the grass. He notices that she's wearing a neatly folded female school uniform with a katana on top of it. A few moments later, a brunette in just her underwear emerges from the water. The hero's eyes sparkle with what he sees. The girl notices the guy. Their eyes touch for a moment, and then they both flush red with embarrassment. They understand that they are in a very awkward situation. Both start screaming in panic, and the fair sex turns around, squatting down and covering all their intimate areas. She asks in fear what the guy is doing here. Chapter 1-5 The hero begins to sharply justify himself. 
He apologizes, claiming that he was just passing by, and then claims that he didn't see anything. He even clarifies that he definitely didn't see her in a white bathing suit. He apologizes again for bothering me. He invites her to leave without quarreling, noting that he has innocent eyes, so he does not lie. A representative of the fair sex all red comes out of the water to him. She picks up her katana and starts chasing the hero. The guy also offers her to get dressed first, realizing that the situation is out of control and you will not be able to escape just like that. Fang Ken decides to go for a dirty trick. He stops abruptly, pointing a finger somewhere to the side and declaring that there is a UFO. The brunette is not lost for a second. Interest gets the better of her, and she looks in the direction indicated, and when she finds nothing there and turns her head back, the guy is already gone. She realizes that the boy has deceived her. The girl understands that she missed the impudent man. The guy saw her in a bathing suit. She is very ashamed of this, so she decides that the next time they meet, she will kill the brazen pervert. Feng Kin stops after what time? Beads of sweat run down his face. He realizes that he has come off, but he had to get into trouble during a simple walk. Although, remembering what he had to see, the hero notes that he is not a bit upset. The guy quickly throws his fantasies aside, deciding that the time is not needed for this. The hero realizes that the time has come to meet Chu Zin and Hong Kai Yang. He walks over to Long Yung's cafe, where his friends are already waiting for him. Xu An immediately jumps up to him, forcing the conversation. The guy notices that Feng is a real hero. He even started to think that he wasn't coming back, so it should be celebrated. The Lovelace starts counting from one to three, and then asks to smile. The camera takes a picture in which the hero is at a loss, and Chuan smiles brightly. The blonde notices that the hero will turn out very well in the photo, after which he makes a small blot that Chuan, of course, turned out better, but Feng Kin is also not bad. Chuan Zin notes that he can add a filter to sour the face of the interlocutor. He decides to find out the hero's opinions on this issue. Feng, on the other hand, is very annoyed by his friend's greeting. He grabs him by the shoulders, declaring that he will kill him. The hero says that he is already fed up with such jokes of Zion, so if he dies, he will take the guy with him. Go on for a while. Friends calm down. The hero tells what happened to him in a short time. After that, Chuan notices that he has two pieces of news for a friend. Since one is good and the other is bad, he asks the hero to choose which one to start with. Feng asks you to start with a good one. A happy smile appears on the face of the comrade, which causes the hero to be apprehensive because he does not understand why Xuan is happy. The blonde says that the hero was lucky with the class. Feng Kin asks for a little more details. Xuan explains that he was in class 1, where only stunning beauties study. The hero's eyes widen, but not in surprise. It's just that it's not good news at all, but rather neutral, so he decides to move on to the bad news. Xuan says that all these girls are like roses with thorns. After this, Feng asks his friend to express himself more clearly. It turns out that last year, 300 brave guys transferred to this school, and a third of them got into class 1, but none of them ever returned. When the other guys found out about it, they tried to escape, but they still met the same fate. Among the class, there are several girls who were nicknamed the Four Witches. One has light blue eyes and pink hair. She wears a short sleeve shirt and a tie. The other has dark blue hair. Her bangs cover her right eye. She also dresses in a school uniform, but prefers to wear a thin windbreaker on top of it. Her eyes are lavender in color. She is presented in a sleeveless blouse that bears her thin shoulders. The last girl has light blue hair and green eyes. Unlike the other witches, she has short hair and wears sportswear. Feng Kin mentally understands that the situation will be very difficult. The hero notices to himself that with these four girls you need to be careful. At this time, Xuan decides to tell one more important detail, assuring that he has not yet spoken. He says that you need to be careful with other girls, too, because they have more than a hundred ways to get rid of guys. This news causes a storm of indignation in the hero. He shouts nervously at his friend, because it's hard for him to believe what they're saying about school. He doesn't understand why girls are involved in destroying guys, because he believes that they should spend time on homework or lessons. On the other hand, the main character seriously thinks about the words of his friend, because if everything that Xuan said is true, then his affairs are very bad. He sweats nervously, realizing that there was no point in lying to his friend. The realization that he can't sit back comes quickly enough. Feng Kin understands that an action will lead to sad consequences for him, so he decides to come up with a plan for how he should proceed. 